Please welcome to the stage the only gift I wish for this holiday season. I cannot believe we've never had her on before, but that changes tonight. It's the incredible, the legendary, Kathy Griffin. Hi. Thank you for being here. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Does anybody call you Johnny? You can be the one. I chill, I don't know why I like it. It just feels familiar. Okay. You're in the Johnny Carson seat, Johnny. Yes, Ooh, hey. that's right. You're young gay Johnny Carson. I just Hell said yeah. it. What a dream, man. This You're is welcome. going well. As an OG fan yes. of my life on the D-list. Oh, thank you. I read something arguing that it was the spiritual precursor yeah. to keeping up with the Kardashians. Thank and, you. And I read it in something they owe me I wrote to myself because I've just said it. <laughs> Wait, you wrote a letter to yourself? I'm just, it's just something that I believe. Don't you oh, think it okay. is? I thought you were one of those letters like, dear future self, I've never felt better about my body image. You're one of those. Yeah. Okay. But it really is. It was like, it was ahead of its time. Don't you think? Now, it was really real. And that's what real. I'm proud of. Like, there were no writers or anything like that. And my mom and dad were just like that. So if you saw them on my life on the D list, you really knew them. They were exactly like that. And um, it was, you know, a fun show because they honestly just followed me around for like eight months a year hoping I would do funny shit. And you did. I did. I love that show. Thank you. And I would plan my life around it. So like I would take a especially tough gig, like a corporate gig or something. And I was like, well, I'm going to bomb, but it could be good for the show or whatever. But they were always wanting to um, have me jump out of a plane. Every season, they'd be like, this year, you jump out of a plane. I'm like, I have been through enough. I don't need to jump through out of a plane. What was up with that storyline with Wozniak? Well, Steve Wozniak was in love with me. He was he, just in love with you. Well, don't, yeah, easy, easy. You act shocked. Um, well, no, no. But no, just, we, it, were, it just... we were really good friends. And when he, he started like writing to me somehow or somehow he got to me and I actually did think he had a crush on me at first and I remember thinking I'm going to be a billionaire <laughs> and um, I got to know him and he's a very quirky guy he's obviously smart but what I like about him he's very giving about like talking about the early days of Apple because let's face it if you're get to sit and talk to Waz you want to hear about the garage with Steve Jobs and all that stuff so he was super fascinating and super weird my mom was very freaked out him. Well, that well because it was, and that comes across yes. in the program. She didn't they, know what to make of it. Because that's why I was like, oh, he's in love with you because that kind of makes sense because he wanted to be there, but it didn't seem like you knew why he was there at times. I was not sure to this day, and my mother would go, "Something's off about him. Something is off." And she go, "I don't care how goddamn smart he is. Something's off about him." <laughs> yeah, your mom was your mom was the funniest part of that show. Well, she was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> She's drunk in heaven, everybody. She's drunk, drunk in, heaven. in heaven. Tip it. You're currently on tour. My life Whoa, on the- Whoa, hold on. I, let's just, let's not undersell it. I'm fucking finally uncanceled. So let's talk about that. Well, that's, that's what I wanted. I mean, to... years, Johnny. You were canceled. Years of years. the phone not ringing. Years of no theater wanting to take a chance and let me perform there. And finally, after that whole Trump thing, 40 cities, baby. 40 cities. So talk to me about being uncanceled. Is it a feeling you feel deep in your, like, do you wake up one morning and you're like, hmm. You know, I feel like I'm still somewhat canceled, but also like I have to admit I'm a little snooty and take umbrage to even using the term so I shouldn't use it because usually when somebody gets canceled, frankly, they've done something wrong. Like they've said the N word or they said the Holocaust doesn't exist or something. I took a picture that people didn't like. And I was investigated by two agencies within the Department of Justice. And I just got a Freedom of Information Act recently showing how serious the White House was about charging me with the crime of conspiracy to assassinate the President of the United States. And I was interrogated under oath and I was put on the no-fly list. And you know, it was a real thing that I was dealing with while, of course, having all the MAGA crazy people like threatening me and blah, blah, blah. But because of that, my own industry turned on me, frankly, because remember, it came from left, right and center. It wasn't just the right wing, like everybody was pissed. And it's just lasted for years. So just going, even though I've been touring for decades, I've done like 19 TV specials and all this other stuff, just to not work for five years really fuck with my head. Uh, yeah, how did, 
when did the was there a moment where like like did all do all the theater did all the promoters get together and say like people have forgotten long it's over now we can let her back in the theater like how does it actually mechanically end like the bomb threat stopped oh that's good so i don't blame the theaters for canceling my my tour that i was in the middle of when the trump thing happened because these are theaters that you know the count basie theater in red bank new jersey they've usually got like stomp or blue man group yeah they're not used to getting the call that's like i'm gonna slice that cunt in the cunt then i'm gonna slice her cunt again because she's a cunt and then i'm gonna bomb you cunts like it was cunty yeah. Was, they were, they're very into wanting to slice my cunt. Not your words. Not your words. And, and I don't, I'm not saying they are, Johnny. Yeah, I don't. I, thank you for correcting that. <laughs> I, I hadn't realized that we'd given that impression, but can't be too careful in this day and age. You're also currently being sued in Tennessee, of all places. Yes. Uh, I, now, I thought that Tennessee... I was being stupid. I thought Tennessee was like Brigadoon, like a fictional old fashioned <laughs> place, but it's real. It's real. And you're being sued there. Yeah. And I found this to be, so basically there was, there were a, a couple years ago, a guy, uh, uh, was caught on video, basically mocking a teen for wearing a teen, uh, boy for wearing a dress to his prom. Yeah. The they were getting their prom photo shoot in a hotel lobby. And this guy got caught on film just being a huge prick. You just posted the video. Yeah. Well, I reposted it. It had already been on TikTok for a full day, which is a long time in TikTok time. I wasn't even on TikTok yet. I was still like more of a tweeter. And so I reposted it. And it was one of those like, okay, internet, you know what to do. And the guy was actually fired before my tweets. So he got fired and the company fired him and said, you know, we, of course, we have LGBT customers and employees, et cetera. So I think they did the right thing. And um, he turned around and is suing me. And uh, he's not suing me for defamation. Because you just posted a factual just thing. Just a video. And I did call him a homophobe. And that video shows he was engaging in homophobic activity. But it's a jurisdictional issue. And by the way, this is my fourth case brought on by a MAGA Trump supporter. I had two in Kentucky, one in Kentucky State Court, one in Kentucky Federal Court, and I had one in L.A. Superior Court. But this one, and I'm just saying that because the tentacles of the Trump thing kind of still go on. And in my opinion, this guy wouldn't be suing me unless the Trump picture happened. Right. And so uh, he's suing me on a jurisdictional issue. And by the way, if I lose this case, and the Sixth Circuit has just gone in his fate for not my Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, if I lose this case, it's bad for everybody because that means if you tweet about somebody like, let's say there's a Karen video, right? And somebody calls somebody the N word at the grocery store and then you tweet, oh, wow, that person's a a hole or whatever. And you're in California and they're in Michigan. They can drag you to Michigan to go through a civil trial there. So I don't want to go um, on trial in Tennessee. So I know that's a shock to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you can go for me. So it's it is so just basically, at, at the the this guy is lives in Tennessee, sues you in federal court in Tennessee. Yeah. The court says it's been dismissed already. Yes. So the court says no, you can't just you can't just sue someone who lives in California. Based uh, on a tweet about someone in Tennessee. Right. You, because then. You could be sued anywhere. And, and people and, could be dragged across state lines constantly across the country, et cetera. Uh, but then the, this, the the appeals court actually said, no, 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 this can move forward. And even though um, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I don't even think lawyers are great. The, <laughs> like, even though there's no merit to this, the, the chilling effect on free speech is that just being it used to be this guy, if he wanted to go through the trouble of doing this kind of frivolous thing, would have to fly all the way to California yeah. to sue you here. And now this is basically saying that anyone anywhere can basically chill that, that you're basically being punished for having had this opinion. Yes, and, and it, well, it's an opinion. It's, so I don't that, understand the just I do not understand how this hasn't been thrown out for a bunch of different reasons. Well, what I learned now that I've been in the court system for six and a half years since the Trump picture, and I'm like a professional defendant. I was also sued by a dozen families. Do you guys remember MAGA hat kid? That kid that went to the National Mall when the Native American guy tried to kind of stop them from maybe causing trouble. So that guy, his name is Nick Sandman. And he got some kind of a settlement from CNN. I'll never know why they settled, but it could have been a dollar, it could have been a million, I don't know. So uh, 
a dozen families from that school, Covington Catholic, sued me or tried to sue me. And those cases each took about three years to go through the system. So the part that's discouraging to me is I think the courts know that this is a specious lawsuit, and yet they let it go through all the paces, and I'm still not sure why this guy keeps getting to appeal and appeal, but I do believe they learned that from Trump, because Trump brags about that. He loves suing people and just keeping it tied up in the courts. And I just want to say to any of these litigious people that are out there, I think you're good, and I don't dislike you or have any problem with you. And you're and all very handsome. You're, and and you're whatever your feeling and is fit. and justified, by the way, whatever you're going through, I'm right there with you. I'm right. on your side. Not like me, a big old contrarian. So your first TV special was in, I believe, 1996. Okay. And <laughs> no, because I, I, I remember, like, here's what I wanted to ask you about it, because I feel like I didn't know what a gay icon was <laughs> when I was a little gay kid yeah. seeing those specials. And even those specials, a lot of the content wasn't explicitly gay. Right. And yet... It spoke to you. Yes. Yeah. And over the years, you've, 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 uh, it's evolved, right? Because at the time, even talking about gay people as being gay was well, like a risk. Well, first of all, the word, when I started comedy, the word wasn't gay. So it was the F-A-G word and it was spewed with impunity by comics and it was still out there in a way that it isn't now. But even, but even just like, it went from just being willing to joke about a gay person being uh, a or, top or a bottom. a bottom or just or just like being a d diva or being, yeah. you know, just like all of that mm -hmm. was like like risque at the time. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if you've felt how that's changed or how it's how how being seen as someone who's like in gay culture has changed in the, the, in the years that you've been doing these specials? Well, I think it's a relationship. And so when I was a little kid, I just found that gay kid in freaking first grade. And I don't know if Brian Check turned out to be gay um, <laughs> or where he is now or his wife and family for all I know. <laughs> but I just feel like that's who I was. And you know, when I was in high school, I actually was lucky enough to go to a really big public high school, 5,000 kids. And so the drama department was no joke. It was pretty serious. And that's where I met a bunch of other gays and the lesbians were doing the lighting. You know, they did, they hung the lights. Those gals hung the lights. And yeah, so- They did tech, they did tech. Yeah. They did the tech. And <laughs> well, I don't want a straight person doing the tech. I mean, that's a disaster no. waiting to happen. No, thank you, not no, on my watch. Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. And so it's that kind of just sort of a rapport and a banter. And I think, like, I was thinking about why so many gay men felt so almost proud of my mom and dad on my life on the D-list. And also, they didn't talk about gay stuff. But I think it just came through that they just were accepting. So my mom and dad would never say, you know, they'd say, like, well, we're going to rage because the gays put on a hell of a happy hour. And let me tell you something, they have some hors d'oeuvres that are out of this world. You know how they are, Kathleen. And so she wasn't saying like, I know a gay person. Like, just the way they lived, I think just kind of, you know, uh, let people know they were didn't have those biases. Hmm. What do you think of the kids today? They're a wreck. They're an absolute wreck. They don't vote. They don't care. They're apathetic. They look at their phones. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. And I'm a boomer, and it's not a great time for my people either. Jesus Christ. The boomers with those Facebook groups scare the shit out of me. And then the QAnons come after me. They think I was, I'm harvesting baby parts with Killary. That's what they call my Hillary. They call her Killary. So the Qs have discovered me, and I'm. they think I went to Epstein Island, which I giggle because the notion of me even ever knowing Jeffrey Epstein, but they think I'm on the flight log because somebody made a fucking Word document or something, <laughs> and there's just a list. And by the way, I'm in good company. It's like Robert De Niro, Madonna, Tom Hanks. So for now, you know, but it's crazy how crazy people have gotten. And I truly feel a third of Americans are truly in a cult. Yeah, it's a huge bummer. How do you think the kids are doing? Uh, I have just... Are they going to vote? I Well, it's more like I... I I understand. Get your point, Jesus Christ. 
Here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. We remember every, the further you go back, the further you go back in a gen, like the older the the older the generation, the quieter they remember the world. The older you are, the quieter the world was when you okay. were a kid. Like, you know, I think like for me, like I, you know, I grew up in a quieter world than the kids than the second wave millennials who grew up in a quieter world than the, right. and 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 so we all remember what it was like before now when it's like there's a siren going off all the time. Yeah. When there's just sirens constantly, constantly, yeah, yeah. constantly. And we're all having conversations as if the, as if we live in a world that might get quiet again because mm -hmm. we remember what it was like when it was quiet. Yeah. But they don't remember a quiet world. They've only known the sirens. And we're trying to convince them that if they get involved, they can, if they can help, better. they can make it better. But they don't know a better world. They just know the noise. And But can you, okay, so here's, here's my gripe. First of all, I'm so old, I didn't know they stopped teaching civics, period. So I heard they just don't fucking teach it. And they don't mandate um, physical education anymore. That's what I heard is the new trend. Well, I think that's good. Oh, well, that's great. I didn't get a you fucking thing out of solution problem. I don't get a thing out of. I didn't get a thing out of climbing oh, that rope. Christ! Um, and by the way, just, once a year they make the kids on a random Tuesday run a mile. That's yes. not a good way to train well, it's us. A start. I sit on my it's ass. A start. I sit on my ass all year long, and they're like, Mrs. Freelander's like, go run a mile. You should have run a mile today, and I love Mrs. Freelander. I get her. <laughs> In a way, you never will. No, but like, do the kids get mad? Because first of all, I just have to say this okay we're sticking with joe biden and he's our fucking guy that's it no no he's I our grandpa wanna, no i i'll sip it with the grandpa let me tell you something first of all do people that don't like joe biden or think he's too old like first of all he hasn't done enough for them do they realize we lost the house of representatives we lost everybody because not enough of us turned out. So we're down by fucking seven seats or whatever. And we don't really have the Senate because of you know who and you know who, Cinema and Mansion. And you, we have to vote. But if we divide and like some people are like, I like Newsom better. I like Newsom too. But he's, he's our plan B if Joe fucking croaks like in a week. <laughs> and... And that's so important. We do have to have a plan B. No, I agree. Because those Republicans have a plan B through Z and double A. There was something that I, I always love this, that you would walk around a party in Los Angeles and you would just say to people, strangers, yeah. congratulations. Right. What happens? Okay, so I was doing an experiment because people in LA are such assholes. And I was <laughs> at this very fancy... Like, it was, I think it was, I was still on Bravo, so it was like a big NBC Universal party, and it was this guy's house named Ron Meyer, who was a, the, like the head of Universal. And I thought it would be funny to just go up to strangers and go, congratulations, because every single one of them went like this, thank you. Incredible, incredible. And then finally, one gay boy stops and goes, for what? And I go, sit with me. <laughs> One person. Everybody else is all thanks. I just think that's just so fun. That just the idea that you th you think that you have so much going on and that everybody knows it. And <laughs> nothing to me has captured more the experience of moving to this city yeah. than the fact that if you just go up to a stranger on the street and yeah. say congratulations, they'll be like, "Thank you, thank you for thank noticing. You. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you, well, Kathy Griffin. She's fucking back. My life on the PTSD list. You're everywhere. Yeah, 40 cities. Go to kathygriffin.com.